This episode was brought to you by CuriosityStream. Being a tick isn't easy. They're an arachnid parasite that clings to its host for several days, gorges itself with blood, and grows to 600 times its original size. They're the stuff of nightmares. Hi, I'm Danielle Defoe, and you're watching Animal Logic. There are three tick families and over 900 individual species. Ticks are found all over the world, mostly in warm and temperate regions, but they're not fair weather parasites. Some species can withstand freezing weather. Over 40 species can live through bitter North American winters, and one species, the seabird tick, has been found in Adelie penguins in Antarctica. Most ticks are members of the hard tick family. There are 700 members in this family, and they all have hard shields on their dorsal side and very large feeding parts. Soft ticks don't have a hard shield. Their backs are pear-shaped and leathery. Their feeding parts are not visible from above, as they're located on their underside. The third family of ticks only has one member. They're called the Nataliella, and they're only found in southern Africa. They're the most basal ticks, and they resemble the most primitive ticks in the fossil record. They need a blood meal from a new host every time that they molt. And hosts are hard to come by. They only need to eat three times in their life. But if they can't find a host, they're not able to grow or reproduce. Different species specialize in different hosts. They've adapted their strategies to maximize their chances of finding a host. Ticks have specialized sensory organs called Haller's organs on their front legs. They're little pits packed with chemoreceptors as well as temperature and humidity sensory organs. Imagine being able to smell with your hands. Soft ticks tend to live in their hosts' nests, burrows, or wherever they agglomerate. Most species specialize in birds and come out to feed at night when their hosts are roosting. Hard ticks perform a behavior called questing, where they sit on leaves or blades of grass and wait for their hosts to walk by. Small ticks stay closer to the ground and wait for small mammals or birds to cling on to, while larger ticks can go a little higher and wait for larger hosts, such as dogs or deer. If the right host brushes against them, the tick attaches to them. And then it's time to eat. Bon appétit, little ticks. Tick mouth parts are basically a harpoon-shaped needle surrounded by two serrated knives. The knives are called the chelicerae. They make the incision in the skin through a series of stabs. Then their harpoon, also called a hypostome, sucks the blood while simultaneously anchoring the tick to the host. To do this, they have several backward-facing barbs that act as grappling hooks inside the host's flesh. Unlike mosquitoes who just want to hit it and quit it, ticks are there for the long haul, with some species sticking around for up to a week. When they feed, they get huge. Hard ticks can grow up to 600 times their original size in just a few days. If a human could eat that much, they would be as heavy as an African elephant after every meal. To accommodate this dramatic growth, cell division occurs as they grow new cells on their cuticle. Tick saliva contains a cocktail of anesthetics and anti-inflammatories to prevent the host from noticing them. Soft ticks are a little different. Their bite is more painful, but they only need a few hours to gorge themselves, and they only grow to 10 times their size. When they're done, they let go. At this point, they would have acquired enough nutrients to molt or to reproduce. A single tick can lay up to 3,000 eggs, but it takes over a year to reach sexual maturity, which is a relatively old age for invertebrates. Uncharacteristically for arachnids, tick larvae hatch with only six legs, but get two more as they molt into nymphs. 
Nymphs are about the size of a poppy seed and are most active in the spring and summer, while adults feed mostly at the end of summer. Unfortunately, while ticks drink blood, they can do a lot of damage to their hosts, as they're vectors of many pathogens. Ticks can transmit viruses, bacteria, and protozoa. Deer ticks carry a bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi, which is known to cause Lyme disease. This disease causes rashes, fever, and fatigue. And if left untreated, it can spread to the joints, heart, and nervous system. In North America, deer ticks need to be attached to a human host for at least 36 hours before they can spread the disease. In Europe, other tick species can transmit it more quickly. Most people who get Lyme disease initially get a bullseye-shaped rash at the site of the bite. If you get bit by a tick and get this kind of rash, please visit your doctor. Lyme disease is on the rise, and last year over 30,000 cases were reported. Other diseases spread to people include anaplasmosis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and typhus. But perhaps one of the most interesting ailments transmitted by ticks is alpha-gal allergy, which makes people allergic to red meat. Some ticks, such as the Lone Star tick from North America, the European castor bean tick, and the Australian paralysis tick, can absorb carbohydrates from their hosts. One of these carbohydrates is alpha-gal, which is present in most non-primate mammals and is common in red meat. If the tick bites an animal and absorbs alpha-gal, and then bites a person and injects that foreign carbohydrate through its saliva, it causes the person's immune system to fight it. After this initial reaction, consumption of alpha-gal in any form, including red meat, will cause an allergic reaction. Animals are also susceptible to tick-borne diseases, and in severe cases, they can cause death. Ticks are found on most land animals and birds. Their bites can cause inflammation, immune reactions, loss of appetite, and anemia, which negatively impacts the animal's reproductive fitness. If the tick infection is severe, continuous blood loss eventually leads to death. Some ticks are even inherently poisonous. The paralysis tick is known to cause paralysis in dogs and livestock, especially sheep. Controlling tick populations is almost impossible. In the wild, the most effective method is maintaining healthy predator populations. They lower smaller animal densities and make it more difficult for ticks to find appropriate hosts and spread disease. If you want to be safe from ticks, make sure to use insect repellent when hiking in high tick density areas. It's also good to check yourself thoroughly when you get home. Tick control measures are currently being researched. One of them is using tick wasps, a type of wasp that lays its egg in the body of a tick, where it eventually hatches and eats the tick from the inside. I never thought I'd say this, but you go wasp. Ticks are just one of the thousands of awesome arthropods out there, and the more that I learn about them, the more I become fascinated with the awesome world of invertebrates. One of the coolest documentaries I've watched lately is all about invertebrates. It's called Debugged, and it's streaming right now on CuriosityStream. This documentary follows a series of insects trying to survive in their natural habitat, but it's shot like an action movie. It also made me feel emotional about dung beetles and scorpions, which isn't an easy feat. If you like Animal Logic, you'll love this documentary, and you can even watch it for free. Just go to curiositystream.com slash animallogic and claim your 30-day free trial with the promo code ANIMALLOGIC. I love watching nature documentaries, and CuriosityStream is the best place to watch. It's a subscription streaming service that has over 2,400 titles and a wide range of subjects, including history, astrophysics, and of course, wildlife. 
If you're looking for something smart to binge this weekend, you should sign up for Curiosity Stream. And be sure to follow Curiosity Stream on Instagram and Facebook for exclusive behind the scenes content from the award winning filmmaker of Debugged. So, what animals should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching!